Well, hi, everybody. I'm Mark Graven, Senior Advisor with Kinexus. We're joined today, Greg Jacobson, our co-founder and CEO. How are you, Greg? I'm doing great, Mark. I'm, I'm looking forward to the topic. It's uh, an interesting, interesting little exploration of our stories of a uh, pretty profound person in our lives. And um, I think a celebration more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here to remember and, and celebrate and talk about um, Masaki Amai, who passed away um, so very recently at age uh, 92, uh, Mr. Amai, very influential um, for, for the both of us. So we want to share some thoughts and kind of celebrate what we learned. You know, I had an opportunity to meet him um, a couple of times and we just kind of want to pay tribute um, to somebody who, who is a, a real legend in the realm of continuous improvement or, you know, Kaizen, this Japanese word that that he helped bring uh, to so many others. So, you know, Greg, maybe we can kind of start off and I'm going to kind of simulate through the screen for those who are watching, like the the story that I, you know, that I wanted Greg to share about being handed a copy of MI's mm -hmm. seminal book, Kaizen. Tell us about and, that. Greg. You know, we're, we're back in 2004 or so. I was, I was finishing my residency in emergency medicine back at Vanderbilt. My chairman said, hey, I, I, I learned about this, this practice of, of improvement um, called Kaizen. And I think we could teach this to our, I was going from being a resident to an attending. Then we teach this to our residents and it would satisfy one of the resident accrediting bodies curriculum pillars of system-based practice, but more importantly, it would teach our residents a framework for improving the emergency departments that they're going to be uh, practicing in and running in the future. And I thought to myself, all right, well, that's interesting. And and I said, well, you know, why me? Why are you doing this to me? And he said, well, you think like this. You, you're always mm -hmm. asking, well, well, what if? And why do we do it this way? And wouldn't it be better? And uh, I probably got to page seven. And mm -hmm. aside from me, just kind of floored that none of this information was taught during medical school or residency. But I realized that I was a, I did think like this. I just didn't know there was a body of literature that could really refine that and put that into, a, into a practice. And so that started a journey for me, um, I guess, just shy of 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and the book, uh, I believe it was 1986 when it was published. Um, you, you got it. Yeah. So probably the book had been out 15 plus years at that point, maybe. Yeah, it, had, it has that kind of classic, uh, gray book cover with red print yeah. and you were just showing kaizen something like the competitive reason for japanese success is the white contrast the, the, the key to japan's competitive success yeah. but it could be the key to an emergency department's success right and what's interesting is and you know the literature better than i do but you've described it as it, it's a seminal work in which uh, many of the readers of the book, it was written for a Western audience, and many of the readers of the, of, of the, the of, of the book, it was the first time they were being introduced to these concepts. Mm -hmm. I mean, despite the fact that they their seeds are you know back in the U.S. from the '50s and, and even in the, even mm -hmm. in the '30s, mm -hmm. but perhaps you could talk a little bit more about about kind of where it, where it fits in the arc of of that literature. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Masaki and I, as you know, a Japanese. Uh, man was not a Toyota employee directly, but um, uh, my understanding of his career is that he was working in the U.S. as a, a, a translator. He was working in business circles. And then at some point, um, he met Taiichi Ono, who was directly Toyota, you know, considered Ono, considered one of the fathers of the Toyota production system. So there's a lot of quotes that get thrown around over time that people say are Ono quotes, and it's unclear uh, is it in a my quote or how much of it was in my passing along, you know, from from Ono? And, I, and I'm not trying to paint him as just like, let's say, a scribe for Ono. I mean, you know, Mr. Amai um, was, a, you know, I, I think a deep thinker about Kaizen. And as he worked with organizations over, you know, many decades, I mean, he, he was in his own uh, light an expert. But, you know, that book came out in 86. That was before 
the word lean had been a lean production had been coined. This was before the book, The Machine That Changed the World. There were other books being written in the 80s about, quote unquote, Japanese manufacturing practices and and such. But, you know, Kaizen, the book and through Mr. Amai, you know, is credited with really spreading ideas. I mean, one of the endorsements on the back of the book um, was John Young, the president and CEO of Hewlett Packard Company, Um, you know, the CEO of the American Management Association, you know, it was published by McGraw Hill. So this was for a mass market, you know, business book um, kind kind of audience. And, you know, I think just, you know, very influential, um, you know, and and, and I th- it's interesting, like a lot of people who learn about Toyota, learn about tools and events and I'm like, well, you, you should also be, whether you're getting it from MI, which is a great place to get it from, or from Norman Bodak, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago, or, you know, from Toyota books, like what, what Mr. MI defined, um, you know, Kaizen as, you know, very simply, he said, everybody, everywhere, every day improvement right and you know i think there's still opportunity you know for for people whether they read amai's books you know um, later books that came out um or or you know i think like sometimes people miss that and i know that it's a passion of yours it's a passion of ours at kinexus when we say spread continuous improvement we mean continuous like not sporadic or episodic or event-based mr amai you know he would emphasize different types of kaizen Right, you know, engaging frontline staff and small improvements, but then also, you know, larger, more strategic, mm-hmm. if you will, top down, you know, Kaizen. So I mean, it's this kind of low cost, low risk, continuous empowering people. I think what's really interesting is that as as someone that was finishing um, my studies, my appetite to to read was pretty low. And uh-huh. so I, I read that book and, and I was done reading about it. Like, I didn't think I needed to read anything more. And I just immediately started teaching these concepts to residents and started implementing these improvements. And it, it ultimately, my realization that we had no way to manage this and there was a better way to do this than paper uh-huh. and ultimately led to um, founding Kinexus. But I, um, I, then wrote a paper about it and yeah. was looking in the medical literature, but I was really looking for the word Kaizen. And uh, um, I, I probably came across the word lean in that, but mm-hmm. it, it didn't like lean manufacturing was probably mentioned, but really think about this. So you're talking about 05, 06 in healthcare literature. I found reference to Kaizen blitzes mm-hmm. in the early eighties that if you look at the vernacular now, I think we would call them rapid improvement events or Kaizen events. Right. But I really was introduced to the term lean mm-hmm. um, and, and its importance and the realization that Kaizen is a part of a, a, a small part of a bigger structure um, by you um, when we met in 2011. Mm-hmm. And that was even after the founding of oh. Kinexus. See, I think that was that. 12 years ago. I'd say I've forgotten that. Yeah. The- like I, I, to me, I assume people know Kaizen and Lean all intertwined. But, but I think it's just a good, it's a good, um, it's a good uh, kind of reminder that sometimes um, we don't need to read another book, right? Sometimes it, it's time just to roll up the sleeves and and get stuff done, yeah. especially if you are are, are 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 kind of a frontline person. This is not. If doing improvement work is not what you do every day, then I think you can go a long way with a little knowledge. Mm-hmm. If, if yeah. doing improvement work is what you do 90 plus percent of your day, you probably need a little bit more knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that's just evidenced by the fact I kind of read one book and then I was off to the races. Obviously, I've, oh. I've read quite a bit more since then, but yeah. uh, I just, I want to credit that. I want to credit that he wrote this book. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because you, you don't think about Books as being technology, but um, I just was uh, I was I was talking with um, the the director of the Leap Institute at San Mateo and um, mm-hmm. Beryl, and he made a comment to me. He said, "Technology is the multiplier of intent," mm-hmm. and I think this is such a great example of that because if you ask someone in 1300, is 
book technology, they would have looked at you like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What is this book? What do you mean? You know, so the printed press has really allowed, you know, dissemination. I mean, that, that is technology at its core. And, and that's yeah. exactly what, that, that's, that's what Mr. Amai did. He influenced yeah. people's <laughs> lives way beyond the people that he met. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, there, it's fair to say there would be no Kinexus if you hadn't been given 100% Mr. Amai's book. And that, that is not a stretch. That's like 100%. Yeah. 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 And, you know, um, I want, wanted to talk a little bit. I had the opportunity, thankfully, to meet Mr. Amai on like That's three awesome. different occasions, once in Seattle and then twice in Japan when I was going and doing trips, study trips run by the organization he founded, Kaizen Institute. And, you know, he, um, you know, was, he was funny. Like, you know, I, I've got some notes from the time I saw him speak in Seattle. I'm going to read a little bit. He said, Mr. Amai said, too many top leaders think Kaizen is a bunch of tools for the shop floor. Instead, you need to start with the top three most important things. One, top management involvement. Two, top management involvement. And three, top management involvement. Then here's the punchline that really got a laugh. He said, too many companies skip all three. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he, he really emphasized, you know, Kaizen being, you know, um, strategic, something that would benefit um, customers, um, something involved in, he, he was thinking about manufacturing, but this could apply to Kinexus, the, the design phase, the making phase, and the selling phase. And I think Kinexus has tried, you know, really has developed and cultivated a culture of continuous improvement. I mean, what, what are your thoughts there on like how we design the product and in our services, how we make it, how we yeah. sell it. No, there's no. I mean, there's no question. I, I'm at the risk of this becoming about Kinexus. Um, I, I think that we're, you know, constantly um, listening and incorporating and experimenting and testing and um, and doing that process. Even even the release process, just that the most basic is uh, this iterative process. And um, I think it's uh, it's why it's called a journey. Right. If it's, yeah. it's, um, it's a journey because you don't quite know the paths you're going to go on. And, um, and I just I, I think it's it's remarkable that someone who I mean, I never met you. Met, you met him several times, um, just just had this influence on the world. And so I think um, and, uh, you know, quite frankly, if, if, if I pass at 92 and yeah. Um, two people are, are talking about me and, and just the influence. I'll, I think I'll have lived a, a, a meaningful and satisfying life. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I was in I was in an ER and um, I was doing locums work in 05 in an ER in Hawaii, which obviously we're seeing a lot of um, people across the Pacific Ocean that are there, large Asian population. And uh, this this Japanese gentleman was visiting Hawaii and had a just a devastating stroke um, mm. in the in the ER. Um, not in the ER, obviously before the ER I was coming. Right. I was treating him, and there was a translator, and he was speaking in Japanese. And, um, and of course, I don't understand Japanese, so there's all these you know sounds that I don't understand. And then every now and then, the word kaizen came out because we were talking about the clot busting drugs. That would he would he benefit or would he get improvement from them? And so, like, it would be gibberish, and then I would hear kaizen, and then it'd be more gibberish. Um, and so, I just, I just, it was a, uh, just a an, an interesting kind of cultural vignette about about the word kaizen, and 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 it it seemingly kind of embedded uh, as a as a regular you know word in, in Japan and part of the culture. Yeah, and you know, it's a word people know. Um... You know, final thought I'll add is, you know, I think part of Mr. Mai's passion for for sharing these ideas is that it 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 wasn't practiced equally at every Japanese company. Like, if there's something different about what Toyota created and what some other organizations that I've been able to visit in Japan, thanks to Mr. Mai and Kaizen Institute, um, you know, they they've created something where they 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 might know the word, and there are words like the word Gemba gets used and sort of everyday language, but some of the context and some of the practice, like they, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't come easy. Like it's not necessarily a default, but it's certainly something a lot of organizations uh, do practice in Japan. And, you know, again, back to the title, the subtitle of the book, the key to Japan's competitive success. It's really the key to anybody's competitive success. The beauty of it is we don't have to be Japanese to, to practice these things. And I think I just, I can't recommend the book 
uh, more because it, it was accessible. It, it yeah. spoke to me. It obviously changed my life. It's changed um, all the people's lives that I've had the um, honor of, of influencing. And so um, pick it up. I, yeah, geez, I should have looked it up, but I'm sure you can get it on a, a used copy on, mm -hmm. on Amazon or, or on eBay um, for pennies. And I don't know if there's an audio version or his, his second so. is also, um, I think it's often credited, you know, or at least cited more than his first was it was a Gemba Kaizen? Gemba Kaizen was the yeah. second book. And then actually he wrote a third that I haven't read and I should called Strategic Kaizen that was published when he was like turning 90. Like he was still thinking still. and traveling the world and working with people. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend it now. I've got a copy that's well marked up and highlighted. Let me kind of add, I'll, I want to read one last thing before we wrap up and see if you have a final thought, Greg. Um, just says here, the Kaizen philosophy assumes that our way of life be it our working life, our social life, or our home life, deserves to be constantly improved. I think that's a, a, a perfect way to end, end our remarks about a, a remarkable person and um, at least from our vantage point, a remarkable life. So um, yeah. thank you so much for serving us and teaching you know, the concepts that obviously he didn't completely create, but he certainly helped translate and um, add to throughout his life. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Amai. And, uh, you know, thank you, Greg, for getting together and kind of, you know, just having a good chat about Mr. Amai and Kaizen. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.